The G29 has been out for a while now and many are wondering whether it's still a good option in today's market of entry level sim wheels. Today I'll be reviewing the Logitech G29 after 3 months of ownership and dozens of hours on Forza Horizon 5 and Assetto Corsa on the PC. For this review I'll cover the price, the build quality, the pros and cons and then lastly the value and the competition. So let's get started. At the time of this review, the G29 wheel and pedal set can be found on Amazon for $229.99 or you can buy the shifter bundle for $277.98. You can also score a pretty good deal on a second hand wheel if you know where to look, but I'll touch on that later. Next, let's get into the build quality. The overall fit and finish of the G29 wheel is pretty good. The wheel itself has a hand stitched leather wheel cover which feels very nice to the touch and the shifter paddles are brushed stainless steel and they're really nice to use especially considering they provide a very satisfying click. The wheel uses a steel steering shaft and glass filled nylon for the mounting clamps. The mounting clamps do tend to feel kind of cheap but they're pretty solid once you've mounted them properly to your desk or to your mount. The buttons either feel very mushy or very clicky depending on which you're using, but they serve their purpose. The D-pad is the mushiest D-pad I've ever felt. The shapes, well the shape buttons remind me of my PlayStation 1. And the other buttons are super clicky. Although it might sound like I'm complaining about the buttons, I actually like them with the exception of the D-pad and I think they all serve their purpose very well, especially considering you only really use the buttons to navigate menus every once in a while when your controller or keyboard and mouse aren't the best option to do so. I play on PC and mostly use my keyboard and mouse to navigate the menus, but I do have to use the buttons for some in-game functions like joining lobbies, pausing the game and some vehicle features. As for the pedals, they have brushed stainless steel faces and frames and the arms are made out of cold rolled steel. They feel pretty solid if you can get the base not to move when you're using them. The base does have a carpet catcher on the bottom, so for those of you who have carpet that should help. Um, I have hardwood floor, so it does have rubber feet, but it does still move whenever I use it. I personally mitigate the movement by setting the pedal set against the wall so that they don't move as much. Um, if you don't have access to a wall or an immovable object to set your pedals against, you might want to consider purchasing a mount for the wheel and pedals to have a more sturdy setup so that it's not ruining your immersion whenever they move. But that's enough about the build quality, let's get on to the pros and cons. Starting with the cons, so number one. Like I previously mentioned, the pedals do tend to move quite a bit whenever you're using them and it's best to have a mounted setup or something behind them to stop them from moving. So that can be a little bit of an annoyance and it can definitely take you out of the immersion. Number two, the brake pedal is way too stiff out of the box and it's most likely the cause for your pedals to move whenever you go to brake pretty hard, the whole set will just fly across the floor. There are ways to modify the brake pedal or your in-game settings so that you don't have to basically put so much force in the brake pedal that your whole set will move, but it would have been nice not to have such a stiff pedal out of the box. Number three, the wheel can feel kind of small and this might take some immersion of the experience until you get used to it. It is worth mentioning that there are some aftermarket options out there, but that's extra money that you have to spend if you want a bigger wheel. Number four, the pedals are a bit too close for my liking and the pedal set isn't sturdy enough for them not to move when you really start to get on them. Um, but this might just be again something that you have to get used to and kind of measure your force whenever you're using them. That's it for the cons, now let's get to the pros. Number one, the build quality. So it's pretty impressive and it feels very rewarding to use. Even just looking at it on my setup, it just feels so solid and premium and well built 
it's very nice. Kudos to Logitech for the build quality of the G29. Number two, the fact that this wheel is pretty much plug and play with both PlayStation and PC is a major win. Now I said PlayStation because the G29 is compatible with PlayStation and PC, but the equivalent, which would be the G920, is compatible with the Xbox and the PC. So either way, um, whatever you play on, it's pretty much plug and play. That's a big pro in my opinion. It's super nice to not have to do a whole bunch of driver updates or setups. But on PC, I will mention that you would benefit from using the Logitech desktop app. The third pro would be how customizable this is. So I previously said the wheel feels a bit small, but you can customize the wheel. In other words, you can replace the wheel. There are options so that you can get a bigger wheel and still use the buttons and shifter paddles. So that's pretty nice. Uh, you can also customize the brake pedals if you really wanted to. You could change the springs or the material in the pedals themselves. But um, yeah, that's a pretty cool option there and definitely an affordable option if you don't want to jump a whole nother price bracket in terms of your sim setup. So number four would have to be the relative smoothness of the wheel once you have it dialed in. I have to be honest, I was expecting this wheel to feel way notchier because of my prior experience with another Thrustmaster wheel. Um, I had, I think it was a TMX or something way older back in the day, and it felt super notchy, and that's actually why I didn't want to buy this one. But um, based on my use so far, it actually feels surprisingly smooth, and it really just doesn't feel notchy. I'll include a little clip of the test that it does to calibrate and then you can kind of maybe get a feel for how it might be in your hands. But either way, I'll have some footage at the end of the video of me just using it and you can kind of hear the sounds that the pedals and the shifter and the wheel make and you can kind of use that to judge your decision on whether or not you want this wheel because it can get kind of loud. But anyway, number five is the ability to upgrade to a shifter that's affordable and pretty much plug and play. So the fact that Logitech has a H pattern shifter just plugged in to work seamlessly with the G29 wheel provides more value in that you just plug it into your wheel and it works and it's awesome. Really increases the immersion and I love it. Let's talk about the value the G29 provides against the competition. So I mentioned earlier that you can get some sweet deals for a secondhand G29 set if you know where to look. I got mine for $150 and it looked and was brand new and it wasn't even broken in yet. It still made the metal on metal grind sound that some people complain about and this usually goes away after a few hours of use and it really did. Um, and it also looked like the previous owner bought it, used it a couple of times, and just put it away in the closet. I would recommend checking places like Facebook Marketplace, OfferUp, and eBay for secondhand setups that are marked down a considerable amount. Just make sure you pick one that looks to be in a similar situation as mine. In other words, it looks brand new and it's clean and it's hardly been used. Make sure to ask a few questions about the set and meet at a public place during the daytime. I can't stress that enough. But uh, keep in mind that the Logitech G29 is one generation older than most current wheels. Um, there is the G923, which is basically the newer version, but it is a bit more expensive and many say it's hardly an improvement. In other words, it might not even be worth the money considering. They're basically the same thing. As far as the competition is concerned, there are options from Thrustmaster, Ori, PXN, and then if you're willing to spend a bit more, there's the Fanatec wheels and then Moza. Those are more expensive though. Uh, but the ones most commonly cross-shopped are the Thrustmaster T150, the T300 RS, and the T248. Options from other companies include the PXN V10, and the Hori Force Feedback Racing Wheel DLX. According to reviews, the Logitech is a solid option for the money as it provides great value, especially if purchased on discount or secondhand. And although I haven't tried the other wheels, 
I can definitely recommend the G29 for the price point, especially if you get it on a great deal like I did. But um, that's pretty much all for this review. I just wanted to kind of make a three month ownership review, especially considering I bought mine used. But like I said, it was probably hardly used. So anyway, um, that about wraps it up. Leave a like if you enjoyed, comment any questions that you have and I'll answer them. And thanks for watching. Bye.